Hello everyone, I am Jaydeep Shah. Today I am going to explain microgrid. Learning outcomes. At the end of this session, students will be able to understand different modes of microgrid, differentiate between AC and DC microgrid, explain various components of microgrid. Contents of my presentation. What is microgrid? Why we need microgrid? Components of microgrid. Sustainable Development Goals Classification of Microgrid Microgrid Applications Today I am going to explain Hybrid Microgrid for Campus and References Before going to Microgrid Fundamentals, let us discuss Indian Grid Blackouts. On 30th and 31st July 2012, two large-scale blackouts occurred in India which can easily be termed as the worst power crisis ever in history of mankind. Just imagine condition of thousands of hospitals, critical infrastructure and educational institutes. In first blackout, 380 million people in nine states were affected. It lasted for 14 hours. On second day, 700 million people in 21 states were affected. Three of country's five electricity grids failed. What is microgrid? Scaled down power system. Local generation and consumption of power. So it reduces transmission losses. Typically connected with main grid via coupling point. Manage decentralized energy include renewables and storage in a local environment. Allow for optimizing controllable loads and building automation. Why we need microgrid? Balancing the technology improves energy reliability. It can improve grid efficiency and reliability via ancillary services. Microgrid could be the answer to our energy crisis. Transmission losses gets highly reduced. Microgrid results in substantial saving and cuts emissions without major changes to our lifestyles. And it provides high quality and reliable energy supply to critical loads. Microgrid components, distributed generation, controllable loads, immediate storage, controller of microgrid and point of common coupling. We can see all these components in this diagram that utility is connected by means of point of common coupling to controllable load generation energy storage and microgrid manager manages all these things i request everyone to read these 17 sustainable development goals some of the goals are related to microgrid Microgrid and Sustainable Development Goals Goal number 7 Affordable and Clean Energy for All Goal number 11 Microgrid helps sustainable cities and communities Microgrid also helps in climate action which is goal number 13 because it uses renewable energy sources so it reduces greenhouse gas emissions Microgrid classification as per power type there are two AC and DC nowadays people have started working on hybrid microgrid supervisory control centralized and decentralized operation modes of microgrids islanded mode and grid connected mode single phase and three phase and as per applications residential commercial industrial or utility, municipality and military. Modes of operation, grid connected mode and grid islanded mode. During normal operation, the microgrid is connected to the grid and the loads are powered by a power mix of grid and distributed energy resources power. Grid islanded mode, during islanded mode operation, the microgrid system is not connected to the grid and the load is powered by the distributed energy resources independently of the grid. 
DC microgrid. Many renewable energy sources produces power in DC. So we are using here DC to DC step up and that DC power is connected to main DC bus. Energy storage system, it uses DC to DC converter again and it is again connected with main DC bus. Our utility is generating electricity in AC. So we are converting it AC to DC and it is connected to main DC bus. We are having low power loads. So we are stepping down the value of uh, DC to another lower value of DC as shown in this diagram. If we are having some AC loads, then we are con converting electricity from DC into AC as shown in this diagram and communication networks, it connects to all converters and power management controller. Let us discuss advantages of DC microgrid. First, the reduction in conversion equipment makes the overall system more efficient and reliable and reduces maintenance cost. The use of separate DC bus provides a built-in mechanism for operating critical DC loads during grid outages without requiring a mechanical transfer switch. From the utility perspective, the DC architecture reduces the size of inverters required to export excess PV energy thereby mitigating the potential impact of PV variability on the grid. And last one is DC based battery storage can be much more efficiently connected to a DC microgrid, enabling a more cost effective way to smooth solar power intermittency. Microgrid applications. Customer applications for microgrids are wide ranging from providing power for mission critical functions in cities and at military bases to providing greener, more reliable energy to universities and commercial industrial sites. So here we can see as per the source Navigant Research, 32% microgrids are currently used for institution and campus, 12% are used for utility distribution. 25% microgrids are standalone type of microgrid at remote places. Military microgrid 15%. Microgrid value proposition. There are three main factors. Reliability, cost saving and environment benefits. So these are the different points like military bases, emerging services, renewable energy and electric vehicle integration. If you want to discuss about cost saving, then mines and islands. Total microgrid capacity and revenue by region 2015 to 2024. In 2020, blue color represents Asia Pacific region, which is approximately 1500 megawatt. So total Capacity of microgrid in current year is around 3800 megawatt. It is expected to reach more than 3000 megawatt in Asia Pacific region as indicated in year 2024. Microgrid standards. Here I'm going to explain four important standards, majorly divided in two groups. First one is IEEE 1547.4 Guide for Design, Operation and Integration of Distributed Resources Island Systems with Electric Power Systems. The same standard modified in year 2018 Interconnection and Interoperability of Distributed Resources with Associated Electric Power System Interfaces. So in both cases here interoperability aspects they considered. Second group of standards IEEE 2030. So third standard is IEEE 2030.7 specification of microgrid controllers and microgrid energy management systems. Energy management system helps to check the available value of stored energy and at this moment 
how much energy we are generating by means of different distributed energy resources. So MEMS checks all those things and controls in particular manner. The last standard is IEEE P2030.8 testing core functions for microgrid controllers that are related to testable, verifiable and quantifiable performance. Next two slides are based on communication protocols. Microgrid needs different types of communication protocols. As in my previous videos, I have already discussed about home area network, neighborhood area network, wide area network but here if you want a smart microgrid so you need to sense all the parameters from generating stations to storage to even your load what is the requirement of load at different moment of time so you need to communicate all the parameters so that microgrid controller can control different actions the microgrid communication model consists of three layer architecture where the energy management system sits in the top layer and controls the overall operations of the island of microgrid. The middle layer includes the local controllers that regulate operations within the local grid. The bottom layer includes IoT devices such as smart meters, fault recorders and protective relays which continuously captures and transmits the stream of sensed data. Energy management system and different components of microgrid needs different communication protocols like Zigbee, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and Zwave. Zigbee, Wi-Fi, these protocols I have already discussed in my videos available on my channel on YouTube. So fifth generation of Wi-Fi is very popular. Zigbee is having low data rate, but the range you can get is more as compared to Wi-Fi. Zwave is the proprietary protocol. So here, when we charge electric vehicle, when we discharge vehicle back to grid, so how much uh, amount of uh, money we are getting in our bank balance, then our home area network again works on Wi-Fi. Our smart meter communicates with a controller. So communication is very crucial in case of micro. Let us discuss about campus microgrid. So in this photo, yellow color, we can uh, see as an area of that particular school. They are using fuel cell generators. And this fuel cell generation provides electricity to library, school, grocery store, gas station. If we want to design a microgrid, we need to decide where we have to put uh, local distributed generators, where we can put energy storage devices. If we want to plan a microgrid for our campus, then we should opt for hybrid microgrid. So here we are not going for DC microgrid as well as AC microgrid. So let me explain. Hybrid microgrid design. We need to consider few points. First, load analysis. Then reliability analysis. Uh, we are already having a Wi-Fi communication in our campus. Uh, where we have to put distributed generators to engineering, engineering building, one to this polytechnic building, one distributed generator we can use near uh, hostel, boys hostel, then distributed storage. Again, we have to plan it wisely. For different buildings, we can select different location for energy storage, means battery storage, distributed control is also very crucial. So whether we are going for agent based smart microgrid or we are going to use other hybrid neurofuzzy type of controller. Let us discuss architecture of hybrid microgrid. 
there are two different buses ac bus and dc bus dc bus is connected with fuel cells pv system dc load and storage system ac bus is connected with utility grid by means of breaker and step down transformer ac bus we are having doubly fed induction wind turbine here both buses are connected by interlink bidirectional ac to dc converter the sizing of different resources are very very crucial we have already started working on size of components required for this grid these are the important references and links i used for my presentation india signed paris agreement few years back so when we plan microgrid we should take care all the generators must be renewable sources so it will help in sustainable energy thank you very much